Hey guys, welcome to Enzyme Mental. Before we begin, hit that subscribe button below and click the bell so you don't miss any notifications. And today I wanted to detail for you the critical importance of the enzyme myrosinase and specifically why we need myrosinase to properly utilize sulforaphane. So first of all, sulforaphane is one of a group of compounds found in cruciferous vegetables like bok choy, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, kale, and especially broccoli. These compounds are known as isothiocyanates, and they also include endyl-3-carbonyl and dendylylmethane, or DIM, which are both popular supplements for estrogen metabolism and detox. But none of these plants actually contain sulforaphane. Instead, they all contain a precursor called glucorophanin, and also the enzyme myrosinase. Both glucorophanin and myrosinase exist in separate compartments in the plant, and it's only when these plant cells are ruptured through chewing, plant pathogens, or other damage that both glucorophanin and myrosinase are released. When this happens, the myrosinase then converts glucorophanin into sulforaphane, and that's why you can think of myrosinase quite literally as the key to sulforaphane. Once activated, sulforaphane is a potent inducer of NRF2, or nuclear factor urethroid 2, a major regulator of antioxidant activity. Activating NRF2 increases the activity of critical antioxidant enzymes like catalase, superoxide dismutase, and even glutathione, along with more than 200 other genes involved in cell protection. Like many protective mechanisms in the body, natural NRF2 activity declines with age, and this is why a natural NRF2 activator like sulforaphane is necessary. Sulforaphane, when used consistently, has numerous antiviral properties, like increasing the production of natural killer cells and directly inhibiting viral replication. Sulforaphane is also a potent inhibitor of nuclear factor kappa B, which is a primary inducer of inflammation. Sulforaphane even works well with the bioflavonoid quercetin for promoting detox and urinary excretion of toxins, particularly lung toxins, and this is why you'll sometimes see sulforaphane, or at the least broccoli seed extract, as one ingredient in a quercetin complex. Sulforaphane is highly unstable, and it rapidly degrades, especially when cruciferous vegetables are cooked excessively. Sulforaphane's glucosinolate precursor glucorophanin is water-soluble, so it easily seeps into the water around it. So because of this, you really need to be careful when cooking these particular vegetables, because boiling and certainly frying will degrade glucosinolates, so lightly steaming your vegetables for around 1 to 3 minutes is really the best method to prepare them, because compared to boiling or frying, steaming obviously causes the least amount of glucorophanin degradation. And this is also where the myrosinase naturally produced by our gut bacteria is effective, because there will be some deactivation of myrosinase in the vegetables anyway, even with light steaming, so the myrosinase produced by our gut bacteria will then metabolize any leftover glucorophanin. While glucorophanin is a component in all cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, and especially broccoli sprouts, is the richest source. As a supplement, you'll often find several preparations of broccoli seed extract, known either as glucorophanin or SGS, packaged with myrosinase, and taking glucorophanin this way increases bioavailability far above just taking glucorophanin alone. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.